My name is Michael Ladin. After visiting over 120 countries on five continents, I made the bold decision to sell all of my possessions and become a full-time nomad more than four years ago. Currently, I am traveling in my self-built ex-Army Overland Expedition truck, complete with a KTM motorbike, bicycles, kayak, a one wheel, and all the essentials needed to explore this incredible planet we call home. Join me as I share my adventures and stories from around the world. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, you have joined on episode number 21 of what I'd like to call Building the Ultimate Overland Expedition Vehicle. Now, today's video is going to be a little different than past videos. I have now been living in the truck for about eight months, and I am going to be installing Eco Hubs, and I'm gonna be uh, showing you the entire process. This is actually very specific to this vehicle, the Storton Stevenson, and I know a number of you uh, out there I'm consulting with on Patreon that are building your own uh, platforms based on the LMTV, FMTV uh, vehicle from the military. But if you're not uh, having this truck or uh, thinking about it in the future, this might be an interesting video anyways, just to kind of see, well, how gears kind of work and what goes on uh, to make the truck drive from the engine all the way back through the drivetrain, through the diff, and then out here to these hubs, and that's what I'm gonna be working on today. So, uh, if you're new here, welcome aboard, and uh, let's get right into doing the Eco Hubs. All right, before I get going, let me kind of describe what this EcoHub thing is all about. So picture this, the transmission has drive shafts that go down to the differentials, and there's a gear ratio inside that differential. And then from there, there's axle shafts or half shafts that come from the differential in the middle of the truck out to the wheel. Now in a lot of vehicles, there are no gears out here, so whatever that drive ratio is, is how the wheels spin. Um, in this particular vehicle, and some other ones that I've had, uh, like the Mercedes Unimog, there's actually what they call a hub reduction gear that's inside this housing right here. And it's got a, you know, a set of spider gears in there. So in this particular truck, it changes um, the drive basically from one to one, look at it that way, to it reduces it two to one. So effectively what that does is doubles everything, right? It doubles your RPM speed, it doubles the uh, speed at which the drive shafts are moving uh, to get to the same speed on the road um, or uh, torque settings uh, when you're you know, off road. Um, and that's largely probably why the military chose to go with this two to one. Now, why am I doing this? So basically this is, uh, the Eco Hubs is what they call a direct drive. So it's taking all of the gears inside this hub uh, out and it's changing it from the two to one reduction to just a simple one to one. So basically it's taking the gears out of here and the drive shaft is, is a direct drive. Now what is that gonna do? And why am I doing this? So in theory, um, I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. One, you should be able to get a much quieter ride out of the truck. Um, one of the things you notice when you drive one of these uh, military trucks is a lot of the noise is coming from your hub reduction gears. There's, there's a lot of noise, and I can show you um, on some of the gears I've just taken out. You, you can hear them when you turn them. Two, less wear and tear on the rest of the components, because remember, to go the same speed, essentially you're reducing um, the RPMs and the amount of uh, speed that the rest of the drivetrain is spinning at. 
and that does a couple things. One, it probably reduces some heat. Um, it definitely reduces noise. And the, the thing that people have reported back from doing these eco hubs is that they've been able to cut their fuel mileage um, and increase that by some people are reporting between two and four miles a gallon, which is huge. Uh, remembering that this truck stock right now, um, I'm getting about seven, maybe eight uh, on a good day. So think of that if you could get three miles a gallon better from seven to 10, the percentage of increases is, is, uh, is enormous. Um, what are the downsides of this? Well, that is going to be a good question, and I think I'm going to do this into sort of a two-part video. I'm going to show you how um, I'm going to install these today, and I'll give you some sort of first impressions of driving this on the road. And then I'll do probably a follow-up video later on of kind of my long-term results and what my feelings are. Now, to be perfectly clear, because some of you out there are probably watching this video, uh, that either have this truck or and, and or are thinking about doing eco hubs, I am probably the test guinea pig here from a standpoint of this truck is a six wheel drive. B it is probably the heaviest vehicle that may have ever done eco hubs, and I have what they call highway speed uh, differential gears. So I had already switched out my differential gears. Stock this truck comes with. Um, 390 uh, gears and effectively I put in uh, 307 gears, highway gears they call them. So uh, stock I think this truck maybe will go about 58, 59 miles an hour and it'll max out there and it's at a whipping high RPM. So once I did those highway gears I can probably go 65, I don't know what the top out range is, maybe 72 or something like that. Um, so now I'm compiling not only highway gears on this vehicle, but I'm going to also go with Eco Hubs, and I'm running at about 30,000 pounds, about 15 tons is what this truck weighs, fully loaded with water, fuel, motorcycle, and everything else on board. So it's going to be interesting to see what the, the obviously the fear is, of course, is that you will lose some low end torque. Now this truck starts in second gear. Um, you'd have to manually shift into first, which I very rarely have done unless I'm off-road or in some kind of uh, deep sand or a very steep, rocky, muddy situation. Um, it'll be interesting to see, so at a standstill, starting in second gear, is, it, is the torque loss going to be enough to make it super sluggish? And then, of course, obviously, uh, like I was last week in Colorado, a higher elevation going up steep hills, what's going to happen uh, to the speeds that the truck can perform at. Now, I'm going to assume at, at, a, at a highway speed you probably can, it, it'll simply downshift into a lower gear. This is an Allison 7-speed transmission, uh, so effectively what really what it is is it's a, it's a underdrive first gear um, and then you've got 6 and 7 which are kind of overdrive, so it's really like 4 gears, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so it would be interesting to see whether A, I can ever get into 7th gear because I might have to be going too fast to actually really achieve that. And my goal here is not really to go faster, but in theory, uh, I suppose um, you could go considerably faster uh, with this truck with the um, Eco Hubs in it. So it's going to be an experiment. There goes my air compressor so you can see. Uh, I've assembled, um, I've got two stations here I'm working at. One is sort of my setup station, and then you can see I'm sitting in a chair here uh, in front of the hub. Now, um, I have already done a few of the Eco Hubs in the other wheels. So the process here is going to be uh, I've got to go, obviously, all six uh, wheels have to be done. Once I'm done with that, it's got to sit for 24 hours to set up um, the sealant um, that I'm using uh, in. You know to uh, prevent leaks, and then we reload the f um, the oil back into it, and uh, then we gonna uh, I'll take you through that process. We're gonna reset the Allison automatic transmission, relearn it, if you will, and then we're gonna go for a test drive and see what happens. So let's get to work. Now you're gonna see I don't. Uh, there are instructions that come with this, and there's a couple other videos out on YouTube about how to do this process. I do it a little bit different than the instructions say, and I'll, I'll point out um, at which points. 
I'm gonna, in fairness, I'm not a mechanic, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna say that at the beginning. This is about at the top of the grade of what I'm willing to do on this truck. But um, step one in the instructions is to take this nut cap off and then pull out the, um, the half shaft or the drive shaft here um, and take out a circlip. Now, I don't really understand why I need to do that because this whole housing comes off. So um, I found yesterday trying to get it off with a pipe wrench was near, darn near impossible. So we're not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to take off this housing straight up uh, and then do the uh, circlip after the fact. So that is my method. And here we go. Now you can see I'm doing this with the uh, tire on. At some point I may have, I have the truck actually in, um, the air brake is off. And I may have to jack up this, uh, you'll see later, to get the alignment to get the new components back on. But So you can remember on this truck the uh, hub, uh, hub axles and the hub uh, gearing is fed, is oiled from the diffs. That's different than the front of the truck where they have their individual um, reservoirs that take about, uh, I don't know, 12 to 14 ounces of uh, 90 weight. But back here, it feeds from the diff. The instructions, once again, I'm varying from tell you to remove like half of the fluid so it, it no longer can flow down the axle shaft and into the hub. I'm going to tell you from experience, you try to remove half of the fluid and then put the cap back on. Uh, not a good idea in my opinion, so I took the opportunity to do a full fluid change on the diffs. So now I'm going to just sort of tap the housing to loosen it up. And it should just pop off. Now you're going to see, back the chair up a little bit oil's going to pour out of here and run down the tire, but that's the way it works. And I'm doing it very carefully. There you go. So none of these parts uh, for the Eco Hubs are reused. So this whole housing and all of these spider gears, as you can see in here, there's your two to one uh, reduction these basically come out. So basically what you're doing is taking all of these gears out and replacing it with nothing. <laughs> That's the theory behind this. Thus, it's direct drive. Now, this is the axle shaft right here. You can see there's a circlip on here. I've got to remove that. Do not, under any circumstance whatsoever, pull this axle shaft out because what will happen is it will fall out of the differential and it is, no. Nope. This little tool right here uh, gets it back in because, yes, I found out the hard way on the other side when I was doing it yesterday. Um, they're not that easy to get back in, so do not pull it out. Okay, of course, it usually flies into another country, but this time it didn't, so here it is. Um, one other thing about this, so we're gonna, I'm going to show you, we have to grind this down in order to fit it into the new... Uh, Eagle Hub assembly. The um, I kind of wish the kit for three thousand plus dollars just came with new circlips that were already uh, shaved down. But we'll show you how that done in a little bit. So now that I pulled that off, I can slide this out. Remember, keeping your thumbs on the axle shaft. Take that gear off. Now these don't usually pop out. So you can see this axle shaft is, is in there. You want it to stay in there. <clears throat> you usually can kind of wedge keeping this axle shaft in place. Uh, sometimes it's going to take a good hammer. I've noticed on each one... Oh, there it goes. Okay. Now, if I keep holding this shaft in, I should be able to pop out all of these spider gears as one assembly. I'm going to put them right down here back in the thing where they came from. <clears throat> last up is this last gear here in the back and once again holding the shaft in. 
kind of wiggle jiggle it out like that and this comes out and you want to be very careful and make sure that there are shims on this it looks like on this one there are three shims those stay with this so they go back on there and stay inside so that is all of the gears removed um, the big operation uh, for this uh, and the thing that really honestly you could do each wheel in about mm, <laughs> you could probably do it in about 10 15 minutes if it wasn't for the clean so this surface here um, that we're going to mate the new components to has to be absolutely clean and dry and one of the challenges of course is getting the um, RTV uh, sealant that they used prior to this out of these bowl holes they got to be completely clean and dry so that is probably what takes the longest amount of time um, when you're going to go do this project if you were in so inclined of doing this on your own truck uh, make sure that you buy a ton of towels paper towels and stuff shop towels and a whole lot of um, brake cleaner you go through cans of brake cleaner I'm, I'm averaging about a can almost a can of tire so uh, a wheel so you really want to have enough of that on hand uh, plenty of uh, blue Loctite and plenty of uh, RTV and I'll show you and I'll put it down in the comments what you need uh, for supplies to do this I'm going to turn the gears here but roughly you can hear that I mean that's making a little bit more noise than it would because they're not in there perfectly but my point is is that you get six of those going on your truck and clearly that makes some sound uh, the other thing is is these gears are fairly small here right uh, a lot of heat is involved in this and I have a laser gun on board I, I would check this every so often all of my hubs uh, to make sure they weren't too hot it's kind of a great way of telling whether or not you have uh, fluid in there or not but um, important uh, I suspect without all this in there it's gonna run a lot cooler all right so we are now at the point at which we're going to spend the next uh, 15, 20 minutes cleaning up this and making it look ready to put the new components in. I saved uh, the boxes that the Eco Hubs came in to put the, um, the old hub and gears in. And that's just in the uh, event that, don't lose the circlip here. Um, that's in the event, of course, that this whole experiment doesn't work so good and I want to go back to the original gears. All right, I'm just going to wipe down this tire a little bit and get this pan out of the way. And then start cleaning up this hub. Slide this pan out of the way. It's dangerous. All the oil in it. And I've got my chair here. Pull right up. Okay. Going to use a lot of brake cleaner. Uh, I hit the thing with a uh, kind of a little soft wire wheel so it doesn't damage anything but cleans off the RTV. kind of cleaned off a little bit and then uh, you're also going to want to this is the more dirty part spray some brake cleaner in each hole brake cleaner is your friend now we've got a little tool here that I made stick in each one of these holes and see if there's any silicone in there it's weird sometimes they're in there and sometimes there's empty so so far we're doing pretty good here so it's weird each uh, wheel I've done has been different so presumably they took it apart at some point and did different things but this one wow these holes are super clean weird um, like I said, lots of rags. Just wipe 
wipe, wipe, wipe stuff. Now I bought the, um, this comes with or without gaskets. I bought the gaskets. They're actually um, metal gaskets with, uh, I guess, a rubberized coating on them. They're pretty nice. Probably well worth it. I kind of a fanatical fanatic about leaks, so I'm doing both. <laughs> I'm RTVing it and I am using the gaskets. So just gonna clean out these little holes here. Like I said, these were this was pretty clean wheel for some reason. faster than normal. I don't like to film the first wheel I do just in case I screw something up, of which I did on the other side. Like I said, I pulled the um, the axle shaft out by accident. That was uh, a little bit of a color, colorful language fest, trying to get that back in. The other thing that you use copious amounts of is air. You want to blow out everything and dry everything off, so air gun here make sure you wear glasses too because sometimes the silicone shoots the out of this hole like a rocket remember the RTV and the um, Blue Loctite don't work very well if it's got any kind of grease or any kind of moisture. You can see I'm taking a lot of time with the cleaning part. That is super important. Got six wheels, you don't want to have to do it twice. So this is just about ready start putting on the new parts. So you can see this is really not a very complicated operation. So in here you can see the bearings, and then you've got the, uh, I guess the nut that holds everything in place. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you that there's another piece that goes on here. Um, I forget what it's called. This is also an optional. Somebody online said it was more secure uh, to keep this uh, from sliding anywhere. Because remember, this gear uh, reduction, this is like the thing that's not being used anymore because the shaft is gonna drive it. Um, so I'll show you that in a second. But I, uh, I got that piece as well. And like once again, I'm gonna reiterate, these are the shims that were in there. We'll leave those in there because that sets the spacing on this uh, screw right here, which uh, EcoHubs has cut on the side and this will remove any kind of junk that is in your threads that you don't want in there. Um, I'm going to tell you right now by looking at them and I can tell they're super clean but I'll show you. I uh, probably don't really even need to do this step here but you can see that I'll just thread it into it and then back it off that cleans out each thread here. So we will do that. And there's a little bit, not much coming out of there. I mean, I could tell by, um, you know, sticking this pick in there, you can, you can feel and then I, you know, I can see inside here. These are super clean on this wheel for some reason. And then after you do all these, all 12 of them, you're gonna hit it with more fluid, which inevitably shoots at you. All right, we're over here at my workstation. As you can see, here are the uh, EcoHub installation guide. Um, 
The gasket maker is Permatex 82194 Ultra Gray. That's what I am actually using, and uh, I'm using blue uh, Loctite. The red is, I find, super tough. Um, there's torque specs for the bolts, and uh, you can see the installation uh, removed the cap screw, which I skipped. Did the split lock uh, collar, got that out, and cleaned everything. And now we're going to install this right here. This is the, the split lock. Um, I clean everything with uh, brake cleaner, even though this is not coming in contact with any kind of um, sealant uh, or uh, silicone, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And then uh, we're gonna put that in. And this is the, uh, the thing I was talking about. These are um, called Delta Locks right here. Uh, and that is going to go in, so it basically goes shim, uh, and then delta lock, and then this split lock right here. That's the order that it's installed. You can see the holes that line up with the bolts inside the uh, hub, and right here, there's the holes on there. Nice thing about the uh, New Mexico sun is it's, everything dries really, really fast here. And so I'm going to take out the, uh, the Allen bolt or the uh, little bolt in here in the split lock because that's got to get some uh, blue Loctite. Make sure the bolt is nice and clean. As a side note, I'm working here in New Mexico where it's about 100 degrees out. So doing as much of the work here in the shade as possible. Uh, this is that delta lock I was talking about. You got to line it up with the um, with the uh, splines here and get it to slide over like that. So the shims are in there. And that delta lock is installed. I guess this, in theory, keeps this whole thing more secure because it's on the splines. I'm not really exactly sure, but um, I got them. Um, and now the split lock is going to go on in front of that and tighten up and that holds this whole thing uh, the bolt behind it and the, and the bearings and everything in place on on this uh, to keep it secure lock tight that and uh, I am not uh, as you can probably tell I'm super generous with Loctite I I, I like Loctite so um, I use a lot uh, I'm also turning it on as far as I think I can go and still get it to, you know, split. <clears throat> and then basically what we're going to do here is if you can see, I'm going to slide it over there. Now these two holes got to line up with the little pins on the side there. So that's kind of like, and I like to put it in a place where I can get to the Not to... okay. Here we go. We're using the screwdriver, and you can kind of it's a little tight, which I guess is what you want. Sometimes you got to back this screw out a little bit so I can spread it out a little bit more. And I got to get it on those. Okay, there we go. It's pretty close right now. Just wiggle it back. Okay. And because I like to make sure everything's tight, we're going to tap on it a little bit to make sure that it is all nice and seated against everything in there. And it's not out or anything when we go to tighten it. So I'm going to tighten that um, thing. Here, I'll give you a, a kind of a close-up of what this looks like. There's the split lock. You can see the, uh, the set pins, I guess, if you will. There's the delta lock, and behind that's the shims. So now we're going to tighten this up. This is the part I don't like because it's a pain to get this tool in there. 
All right, so almost got it tight. It's sitting nice and flush. Just keep checking it to make sure that it's flush. And there's no torque setting on this, but kind of go down and make it tight. We got plenty of blue Loctite on there. And that's tight. So there you go. And that is the split lock is installed. There's your shaft. Remember, do not pull that out. And we're clean and the flange is ready. Our uh, next step up, we're gonna fill in these little half rounds. You're gonna see that in progress. Like I said, can't have enough paper towels. Okay, so next step is the big one. We're going to uh, put on the uh, cross shaft plugs. It's these little things here. I'll show you what they look like. They're basically just little spacers uh, that go in where the spider gear is mounted. So uh, I got to clean these and then put uh, silicone on them and get them stuck in there. Pieces that are going on next. Same brake fluid on everything, clean it off. This is the gasket. It's uh, metal, but it's, you know, you can see kind of rubberized. Adapter plate. It's not a good brake cleaner wipe down. I'm gonna put uh, silicone around on the outside here, and we're gonna do one side of the gasket so that way. Um, what I do because it's so sunny, it's so sunny here and it's drying so fast. I'm going to put the silicone on the gasket and then go put the gasket onto the truck after I do these spacers um, and get that all on there because I'm just worried about the silicone drying so fast out here. Got our little half rounds. Now I can only carry two at a time, so here they are, and you can see they fit super nice right in their little slot and they got like a little ridge on the side so they stay in there nice with their thing i put fingers on both sides that makes sure that they're seated correctly and here's the other ones put that one in there and this one in here like i said finger on both sides push it down nice and good now we're going to put um RTV over the top of it and you're going to want to go past it by about maybe like a quarter of an inch and that makes sure that the when you put the um, gasket on it's all nice and sealed flush so here we are we're just making it nice with our fingers it's like finger painting And you're going over about a quarter of an inch before that bolt hole. And you're kind of making a big one-piece surface there. You're getting rid of the, the uh, cracks, I guess, in between. The little half moons in the, the flange. So there you go. See that? Just rub it on. Don't rush. Nice and smooth. Um, there you go, overlap, so, you can take the camera, you can see it a little bit closer up, looks like I painted those on, and there you go, now, I'm going to go get that gasket, because this stuff dries too fast, so I'm going to get the gasket, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, sealant on the gasket, and and then plop the gasket over the top of this so it'll seal all that and then I take the flange and put it uh, with some sealant on that too and then push it on so so that process like I said that all been pre-cleaned and is drying over there and it's all nice and dry and ready to go and as is this Permatex on one side and uh, I'm going to apply that over my little half moons and against the flange so we're ready to receive 
the, um, the mounting plate. I'm just going to wipe this down on the outside of this so it's a little cleaner because I'm going to apply the Permatex to the mounting plate. And I just got some on here because my fingers were dirty. But there you go, it's in place, lined up nicely with the bolt holes push down so it's covering those half moons and everything is setting in there already. And that's perfect. So there you go. That is the gasket on there over the half moons. You can see their, their little uh, ridges are sticking out on the sides. So that's all ready to go. And now I'm going to go get ready uh, the uh, the mounting plane, I'm going to show you how to put that on. That's kind of critical to this operation. That's the big piece. Uh, and you got to be careful about how you put it on. Hopefully it's cooling down a little bit because it was nuclear. All right, so let's get the blue Loctite on. Uh, be nice and generous. Don't be stingy with the blue Loctite. And then we got to line up the holes. You're like in one, two, three, one, two, three, so you gotta find the right ones. There we go. Try to do it without it touching, and you gotta get it kind of straight. Like I said, you want finger tight on these, and you, you want the flange to be about equidistant to the. Which it already is. And a little crooked, so that's what happens. Remember, don't pull the drive shaft out here. Okay, there you go. So, like I said, these are hand tight. Um, now, very important, what you're going to want to do is push this against it before you put in the other uh, bolts. If you don't do that and you put the other bolts in, you'll never get this thing. Uh, to go in there without sort of pushing on the threads and cross threading and doing whatever. So this is where we want to push it in against it and it is nicely resting there. And then, as you can see, look at look how nice those uh, holes were cleaned out. Because I can, I can just about thread these in all the way. Look how nice and smooth that goes. So now I'm going to put the other nine in there. Lock tight on the threads and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip these in with I'm not going to tighten them, I'm just zipping them in. Just going to put them in here. Still loose but Oh, that's going the wrong way. All right, those are in. Now, the setting for these is on a torque wrench is um, 30 pounds per uh, foot. So, I do it in a two-step process, so we're going to set it at 20 first, uh, about, there's 10, how about 15, let's go set it down. So I do this two-stepper, and uh, Check them all. We want 30. So now we're going to do our double and set this to 30. To help if I could see. 30 is right there. A, um, drain plug here which you're not going to use on the rear right because that's only for the front and a little set thing here so if you uh, you could put screw into that to pop this off uh, to release the silicone if you're going to have need to get in here 
nicely in place. Thank you so much to all my build partners involved in Project Baobab. This would not have happened without you. And you'll be hearing a lot more about their products and services coming up in this series. Putting Loctite on, because I got some confidence that this is gonna line up, but it's not guaranteed. Sure looks like it's close. So let's go Okay. No, maybe not. It's hard to say. Uh, hard to say. Oh yeah. I think it is. I think it is. Okay, finger tight, remember? So this is where you might have to move the tires around, but let's see. I don't know. Well, I think they got two in there, so that's a pretty good indication that we are not having to jack the truck up. Okay, now you can see, oh, I have seated this. You can see on the end here, the Axle shaft here is flush with this. The cap's gonna sit on there and hold it in. The circlip uh, we're gonna put on in a minute. I'm gonna show you all about that. That is to keep it from going too far in. So um, these look like they're in. So I like the lineup on this. So it looks like we don't have to mess with it. So let's get the all 12 bolts in. It's gonna be the same process we did on this outer thing. Now if I feel like these are too tight, I will jack the truck up because I don't want to mess with it too much. But if I can hand screw them in, likely they're good. I think they're pretty good. But so then after I'm done with this, I'll show you the circlip thing. That's my only little complaint about this whole operation you gotta be super careful with. Uh, as I said, tomorrow we're going to wait 24 hours for the um, silicone all to set up and then I'm going to put um, 90 weight oil in the two rear diffs and that by definition comes down the uh, axle shafts and lubricates at the end here. And then in the front, I'm not showing you guys the front, the only difference in the front is it does not have a circlip because uh, the way it's you know designed for the steering and um, you have to fill each hub individually it does not come from the diff so I did not take any oil out of the front diff and that is um, uh, it says in the thing a quart so I've got to verify that because that's that's more than double the amount of ounces that are uh, normally in there it's about 13 or 14 ounces so it sounds like a lot but put these in once again, not tight. I'm just <laughs> these are torqued to 45 pounds, and I'm gonna go with the same method. So if it's 45, I'm gonna do it at 30 to start out with on step one. Now we're going to go to 45. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. So now you could take any old bolt that you took out of the um, flange, it fits in this uh, axle shaft. So if we go like this, very, very carefully. Here we go. And there is the ridge for the circlip right here. So if you just clear it out here. Now we can put the circlip on. Gotta go in the garage and file it down though. Okay, put that in the vise. As you can see here, we have to, um, basically what we have to do is grind down 
this to about an inch of its edge of its life, right to the point where we're going to get to the holes. Hopefully, that will now fit. So we're going to try to put this on and see. Okay, it's in its little, little house. And to make sure that it's in there good, I rotate it around. And it looks like it's gonna clear. So then all you gotta do is push it in and then the circlip holds it against the back of this thing. So that looks good. Oh no, it's hitting. Of course it is. Sometimes it's not completely circular. So let's see if it fits somewhere else. Or we gotta go back to the garage and do it. I'll tell you what, the first time I did this, I had to go back four times. And uh, it's a little annoying. Uh, nope, it's hitting. Hmm. Gotta be super careful here because you do not want to pull that shaft out. Let's see if it fits this way. Oh no, it needs a little more, doesn't it? Okay, back to the garage. Let's see if it clears this time now. Are you kidding me? Oh boy, oh, it doesn't look like it's sitting here very well, does it? I'll tell you what, this is the one part of this kit that I wish came sort of ready. Like a custom one or something, because it's challenging. I mean, we're like with an inch of its it's like on that hole. I don't really want to destroy the hole, but it's too tight. Okay, she's in place again. Let's see if three times the charm. Let's see here. And there it goes. Boom, she's in. Circlip is holding it in place against the back of this outer flange. And uh, all we now have to do is put some uh, silicone on the cap and screw this cap in. And we'll be done. Probably put too much on there. That's all right. Clean it up after. All right, just get it nicely smooth out. And now we're gonna take the screws and the tool and put the cap on. Okay, got the cap in hand. I've got the, uh, the screws. Let's put that there. I'm gonna finish this, and I will um, show you uh, the rest, and then the transmission reset and. Uh, and some uh, early feedback on this. So that is the install process. It's actually, as you can see, pretty straightforward. It's really about the cleaning, uh, having your tools laid out in advance, and uh, plenty of rags, plenty of Loctite, and uh, plenty of brake fluid, uh, or so I should say brake uh, cleaner. And uh, yeah, so uh, excited to test out these Eco Hubs. And, uh, Crossing my fingers, maybe I can get like 40% better fuel mileage. That would be awesome. So uh, one more to go, which I, I won't fool and figure that's on the front. Like I said, the only difference on the front is that no, there's no circlip, so you don't have to go through that whole process of sanding it and popping it in and out, and um, and you don't have to uh, drain the uh, diff because it's just uh, in the hub. About 12, 14 ounces come out. So Eco Hubs, direct drive. All right, I'm out testing out the uh, the truck now. Uh, a, checking for leaks, and B, uh, getting first impressions of the new Eco Hub install. So, uh, I did not video it, and I will put it in the link down below 
uh, resetting the Allison uh, WTEC uh, transmission. Basically what you do is you just turn it on and off five times. Um, the uh, power master power button, make sure it's in neutral. And, um, and then on the last uh, one, you push the throttle to the floor. Uh, all of this is before starting the truck. And then uh, turn off the power switch one more time, turn it back on, start the truck. Um, so far, I've only gone about mm, maybe 15 miles. Uh, I noticed a little bit of power loss uh, at, you know, at a red light at startup in second gear, but not enough to really care. Uh, and the second thing I noticed is it is significantly quieter. The amount of gear noise that must be coming from the spider gears uh, must be enormous because the truck is way quieter. Um, the speedometer is reading half, as I knew it would. So that I got to figure out how to uh, reset the, um, the computer for that. I don't. I don't know. I think you need to plug it in somewhere. Um, it is. Like I said, way quieter. Um, I don't notice any difference whatsoever in the power going up hills. Uh, obviously, it's going up hills in, you know, a slightly lower gear, probably. Um, I noticed since I did the transmission reset, and it probably wasn't done before with after I had put all the weight uh, with the box on this truck, uh, it is shifting like amazingly smoother. Like, like it's not doing its, you know, herky-jerky, particularly when it comes down to a stop. You, you barely feel it. I'm counting gears. I'm, I've gotten up to sixth. I don't think I've gotten into seventh yet. I'm probably not going to go fast enough. Um, it easily goes up to 70 miles an hour. The most significant difference that I noticed, other than the sound, though, and this is non-scientific for sure, I do not have my foot on the throttle very much. So I got to imagine that I'm getting significant fuel savings because to go to the same speed, I can tell by my foot position um, that I'm not, now remember this is a um, an A1 truck with the electronic thr throttle, uh, so fly by wire. But um, I'm barely pushing it down at cruising along at 60, 65 miles an hour. So um, it's definitely less of a throttle position than it was before. So that should indicate better fuel mileage. But that, you know, is uh, to be seen. So, all right. Originally, I was going to do two parts of the video, but I decided since I got delayed getting this one out, I would do it in all in one video. So here I am popping in on you guys after, well, 2,849 miles now with the Eco Hubs. And I've taken very good records of my mileage and I've got my uh, Garmin Tread here that has all the statistics on it. So here we go. Um, probably the thing that uh, is most exciting to me and that you probably want to know about is my mileage. So what I can tell you is, based on all my numbers, after 2,849 miles, uh, I am getting an average of 9.75 miles a gallon. I previously, before the EcoHubs, was getting about 7.1 miles per gallon. That is a 37% increase. Uh, in fuel economy over uh, what I was getting before. Now, um, I will tell you, I, uh, I'm currently parked here in Montana. I have driven through the Bitterroot Range uh, between Idaho and Montana. I have gone uh, up through uh, most of, uh, cutting through actually um, uh, Idaho. Uh, I've cruised along the Pacific Northwest in Washington and Oregon. So I've uh, subjected the truck to quite a bit of different kinds of driving, different winds, uh, a lot of climbing. I've reached uh, up to 9,000 feet of elevation. So a lot of testing. So this is what I would gonna give you as an overview. That's the miles per gallon uh, difference, which is significant. As I mentioned um, earlier, it is significantly quieter. Um, those are really the big wins for me. I will tell you that I'm cruising on the highway at closer to 70 miles uh, per hour now. I was probably going realistically before 62 to 64 miles an hour, so I'm probably going five or six miles an hour faster. Uh, and with those increased fuel mileage uh, savings, that's pretty incredible. Um, 
The downside, uh, I haven't really found one. I will tell you that um, if you're on a significant uphill, particularly at a red light or something, um, there's definitely some turbo spool that has to happen before the truck gets going. It's a little more sluggish than normal. But climbing hills, uh, some steep passes that I've gone through, I mean, it'll just probably downshift another gear or two. So you really don't see the effect. Um, you know, this truck is obviously uh, not super quick, so it's never gonna be, uh, you know, a Ferrari going over the hills. Uh, but I can tell you, I don't, I very rarely drop below, say, 45 miles an hour on super steep inclines uh, going along. So uh, all in all, I would say that's all positive. My review of the product itself has been uh, great. I, my only exceptions that I mentioned earlier, obviously, is that circlip thing is a nightmare. I really hope that in the future, they uh, just put that in uh, with the kit, uh, maybe some kind of modified version of that. Um, the directions, uh, instruction manual, everything was, uh, was really uh, on point. And uh, other than that, you know, the struggle, the two struggles really, like I said, circlip and then putting the uh, oil in the front two um, uh, hubs, you know, where they, uh, it doesn't draw the oil from the differentials. That's a little complicated. You need a, you need a funnel. Uh, and I will tell you that it did take um, uh, a lot more, um, or I went with, I confirmed, I guess, with the uh, directions of this. So you, you are doubling about, um, I would say the, uh, oil capacity for the front reservoirs. But other than that, that's where I'm at. Uh, super happy. Like I said, I'm going to hit 3,000 miles this week with the Eco Hubs with a 30,000 plus pound vehicle, six wheel drive with the 307 highway gears. And, uh, you know, if you got questions, put them down in the comments or uh, DM me and I'll be uh, happy to uh, let you know my, any other thoughts I have on this product. But that's what we're looking at. Uh, thanks again for watching. Appreciate you guys watching this entire series. Uh, please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And did you know you can join for as low as five bucks a month for exclusive behind the scenes Drive the Globe content? Thanks for joining me today. I really hope that you liked this video. And if you did, give a big thumbs up please subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next video.